First of all, thanks for clicking over this video. And if you wanted to know about buck converter and its simulation and modeling, then this is the correct video you have clicked on. Now, if you haven't watched the part one of buck converter, please go to I button and watch that video first before exploring this one. In this video, we're going to discuss three very important topics of buck converter. We'll try to understand how this energy transfer works for an inductor when we are turning it on and off using a PWM control. Another topic we'll discuss different plots on P spice. So we'll simulate this inductor open loop and closed loop and we'll try to understand the different between plots of current and voltage waveforms. Now I have a very important information for the people who are planning to get ORCID license. There are special ORCID offers going on EMA EDA website. So I'll put link in the description for our Indian, US and UK community. You can go to that link and check out the offers. But if you are planning to purchase ORCID standard suite or ORCID professional suite, you'll get up to 50% discount on each of these. So please go to the link, check out their codes. With that said, let's roll the intro. We already know about the buck converter circuit which has battery, diode, a switch, inductor and at load we have capacitor and our resistive load. Now what is the point of using this bulk capacitor at the output side? This bulk capacitor basically help to maintain the voltage across load register. Now let's assume we have input voltage of 12 volt. The first condition of that buck converter is v in will be always greater than v out apart from buck converter we can also achieve same thing using these two things which is voltage divider and ldo the problem with voltage divider and ldo is they dissipate heat that's how they work and reduce voltage at output but in case of buck converter buck converter always reduce the output voltage by increasing the output current so this is the funda of using the buck converter that's why we don't see that much heat dissipation or efficiency is really high for buck converter now let's go a little bit in more detail so firstly i'm just going to close this switch all right so now the switch is closed when s1 is closed the current will flow from battery to rl so the current will flow like this to rl all right and just keep that in your mind a small amount of current or amount of current will be flowing or responsible for charging this capacitor as well right at the same time it is charging inductor now let's suppose the current flow through inductor is il so let's assume this current is il or inductor current is il now what is happen when switch is closed this il will keep increasing right and when inductor current will increase what will happen the inductor will charge that means the magnetic field stored in the inductor will increase right so if il will increase that will lead to magnetic field increment that means inductor is continuously storing the energy right how inductor store energy so if you'll see let's suppose this is our inductor right and this is the flow of current which is il then what will the flow of magnetic field it will be like this right this will be the direction and it will be all you know all over the 360 across the inductor right this will be the direction right so this is our field now while storing energy the polarity of inductor will be plus and minus right because the current is flowing in that direction now Another point is now due to storing energy in inductor, what will happen? The voltage which is seen by RL will decrease, right? Because there will be a voltage drop across the inductor. For example, let's suppose when inductor is charged, when inductor is charged, it's dropping 5 volt. Then what will be the voltage across RL? That will be if V in in 12 volt then it will be 12 minus 5 volt all right which is 7 so in this case the diode 
will be in reverse wires because current will not flow like this right diode is connected in reverse wires so in this case the current will flow from uh, register and capacitor only all right now when the switch is open the current will flowing through inductor will begin to decrease all right because we have load on that right in that case the magnetic field will begin to collapse so whatever the magnetic field we have uh, increased due to increase in current when current will start dropping the magnetic field will collapse and when magnetic field will collapse it induces amount of voltage right that we all know the the normal operation of inductor right and when the magnetic field will collapse and the voltage will induce the polarity of that voltage will be in opposite direction so now the positive sign will be here negative sign will be here right so this is on when uh, our switch is off that means the inductor becomes a current source right now here if induced voltage is greater than the voltage on capacitor it will charge the capacitor as well but generally what happen we will see that during the plot uh generally the voltage on capacitor is kind of covered because we are using very high frequency all right if induced voltage is equal to v cap the current will flow to rl only so that is what happened in real time till here we got to know these two very important points first is how this voltage is reducing on a buck converter and how inductor is charging and discharging right now another point is as i told you at the beginning the current uh, this is the this is the main function of buck converter it reduces the output voltage by increasing in current right so how current is increasing on a buck converter so as i told you uh, these two condition so when s1 is close all right then rl will see the current which will be flowing from battery all right now when s1 is open rl will see the amount of current flowing through inductor so what will the total amount of current flowing through inductor during on and off cycle that will be ib plus il right and that is what we will observe during our uh, waveform discussion we'll see the when as soon as we'll start the simulation the current will start increasing right and this slope you'll see like this so this you will see during on state and this you will see during off state right so let me correct that a bit so this will be continuously increasing or maintaining it all right but after some time when the the current limit of a inductor because inductor also comes with a limited amount of current it can store right so when that current limit will exceed during off state the current will start dropping right so we'll see some waveform like this so there will be sim simple positive slope and a dropping waveform right and when that equilibrium comes this will start maintaining the amount of current right so this is the final goal that we need to achieve and with open loop it will take longer time compared to closed loop to achieve this equilibrium condition so we'll discuss that in de great detail in our simulation part now let's talk about the waveforms so for that we'll open orcad capture cis and i've already simulated this part so you know we can discuss that directly so let's go to the simulation part and here you can see total four waveforms the first one is inductor voltage so this is the voltage across the inductor all right uh, so here we are using a differential probe if you see the schematic here we are using a differential probe which will calculate what is the voltage uh, difference between this point and this point right so this is how it is uh, another is v out so we are probing uh, at the output or across rl and we are observing what is the voltage across the load resistor another two waveforms are current across inductor or whatever the amount of current which is entering inside the inductor and what is the amount of current which is on load so these are the waveforms uh, that i wanted to discuss but firstly i just wanted to uh, discuss 
वॉट इज द करंट वे फॉर्म और वॉट इज द बिहेवियर ऑफ इंडक्टर करंट वे फॉर्म सो फॉर दैट लेस जूम इन देयर एंड देयर आई वॉन्टेड टू शो यू कपल ऑफ थिंग्स ऑल राइट सो हेयर यू कैन सी एज वी हैव एक्सपेक्टेड ड्यूरिंग द डिस्कशन ऑफ ऑन एंड ऑफ कंडीशन द करंट अक्रॉस इंडक्टर इज इंक्रीजिंग सो दिस शोज एज यू कैन सी दिस इज ऑन कंडीशन सो ऑन ऑन कंडीशन द करंट विल राइज राइट आफ्टर दैट वेन इंडक्टर इज चार्ज नाउ वॉट विल हैपन वेन विल टर्न ऑफ द स्विच इंडक्टर विल एक्ट लाइक अ करंट सोर्स सो हेयर इट इज ट्राइंग टू मेंटेन दैट अमाउंट ऑफ करंट वॉट एवर द करंट इंक्रीज इट इज ट्राइंग टू मेंटेनिंग इट राइट एंड दिस इज वॉट इज हैपनिंग थ्रू आउट अ वे फॉर्म टिल हेयर all right so that means this is the limit of con uh, inductor current so on that what is happening when inductor is charged or when switch is on inductor is charged and when we turned off the switch what will happen it can't able to hold that amount of current from inductor right so that's why you can see a dip in this uh, waveform all right and this will keep you know pushing the inductor current to you know moving towards zero amps so this is what is happening throughout this condition and and this is what we wanted to achieve as you can see if i'll zoom in in this section now this is the equilibrium state where we are achieving that continuous current flow or uh, you can say the switching of current through the inductor and what will the amount of current we'll see at load if you if you remember from the modeling part we have discussed in part 1 of buck converter the load current is the average of this inductor current waveform right so this is what we have achieved here let's talk about voltage waveform so we are seeing a very clean and uniform waveform at v out because of capacitor even there is a little bit uh, higher voltage for few milliseconds but in then it reaches the desired output voltage that we wanted from our buck converter and that is happening because of bulk cap if we'll talk about inductor voltage initially the the drop across inductor voltage was 100% all right as you can see the v out was zero that means when switch was on the inductor was dropping all the voltage but suddenly it reduced why it is reduced because of current increment all right because the current start increasing that is what i i have discussed uh, in initial session of this tutorial this is how buck converter is useful there is very less amount of dissipation or something it just reduce output voltage by increasing the current and this is what happened and when equilibrium reach or when we maintained or we got that uh, 20 volt at output okay this current will start maintaining that right so this is uh, one thing uh, apart from that if you observe in this case it is taking around 1 to 1.5 millisecond to reach to that voltage and maintaining it all right so this is a kind of huge time which we we are seeing here because it is open loop if you see the waveform of closed loop this equilibrium will achieve within microseconds now let's see the waveforms for an closed loop buck converter so for that example i am using lm2678 which is a fixed 3v3 output buck converter and here the input is 12 volt for more information i'll attach all these both projects Uh, under the description of this video you can download it and simulate it by your own let's see the waveform so these are the waveforms of v in what is the inductor current what will the output voltage and what will the voltage across inductor let's zoom in a bit so i am going to show you this portion all right so as we have observed first thing here i have used two markers so we can see what is the total time it is taking to get desired output so as you can see the first marker is set as at 80 microseconds another is one before 180 microseconds 
and if you'll see the delta, it is across 95 microseconds, right? So it is taking even less than that. It is taking less than 95 microseconds to reach the desired output. Now the interesting thing I wanted to show you, this is the waveform or this is the, the on and off condition of the switch. And here we have observed the width is continuously varying. Okay. So why it is varying, why it is very kind of uh, uh, the width is higher then it became lower and then it, it is kind of, so here it is trying to maintaining the output voltage and current. As you can see the current increased very high because of this high uh, width of the PWM. All right. Then it is trying to maintaining it for some time, for some microseconds, then it is reduced it and reached the equilibrium. So this total time took very less amount of time for that 2.5 or uh, yeah, it is 2.5 amps of current, which is flowing through this one. So as you can see on this uh, delta or uh, this marker table as well. So this is the advantage of closed loop system. We will achieve our desired output very fast. Plus it is very much in our control, right? Rather than going uh, too high current initially, which can damage the load if it is connected. So yeah, these are the few things I wanted to show you for the closed loop system. And in next video, we're going to discuss about boost converter.